My name is Vanessa Tierney and I am co-founder of Abodu. And today I'm going to be talking about how to succeed at HR uh, after the remote working revolution and also really honing in on startups. So firstly, a little introduction to myself. Um, I launched a platform called Abodu and in 19 we actually launched Geonostics, um, which is powered by Abodu and specifically for providing government with skills intelligence. Um, I co-authored a book that came out this summer called Your Company with No Walls. And really, it's the combined experience of uh, the last 10 years I've been leading startups in remote world. And the last 20 years I've been working in some capacity for startups, tech or talent. Um, but my passion is really around the UN sustainability goals. And I thought that I would really hone in on that to, to start with, because there's an amazing opportunity now for everybody to, uh, through evangelizing remote work, to tick many of the boxes. Um, so under the UN Sustainability Goals, we've got remote working, which we were all forced into if we weren't doing it already this year with very little notice. And companies now are sitting back and seeing the potential, like Pin Interest and announcing that they're um, jumping out of their, their building and that's costing them a lot of money to do so. Other organizations like Facebook and Google announcing that they're enabling remote until 2021 and beyond. Um, and what that has is a really positive impact to the environment, which is brilliant for society. But there is also the ability to become more inclusive and diverse as a society and as companies and organizations. Um, and I'll cover this now through this process that we're all going through of remote working and the impact it can have to startups. So Speaking from experience, um, over the last 10 years, I've been able to unlock amazing talent to join um, startups I've been involved in or have started myself um, because people crave to have, I guess, the excitement of a startup, but really the option to remote work has been one of the biggest selling points. Now, obviously, with the world embracing remote working and the big boys starting to go down this route of realizing the value of having either remote or hybrid models, um, startups will have to become even more innovative in terms of attracting talent. But the more flexible you can be, the more you can tap into talent that have maybe 10 years experience internationally. And now they're at the point where they've had the kids, but they need that flexibility. They don't want to be on planes and trains every day. Um, and being able to access amazing talent in a remote model, it allows you to scale up and down super fast. And within a startup environment, that is critical. Um, something I've experienced more in the last few years is being able to tap into gig workers as well as permanent remote workers. There, there's both options there. And finally, as someone once described a startup with money, it's like having uh, oxygen. And so every euro dollar you spend, um, it's your oxygen. But having a remote model, it allows you to retain more and have a longer runway. Um, so I would encourage us in going through this, if you have any questions around remote working for your startup, please feel free to share it here and I'll, I'll try and help and answer. Um, the impact of remote working on HR, probably for the slightly larger companies, is really amazing. Um, you have broader talent pools that you can access. So no longer are you kind of restricted to this idea that you can only look at talent within a 30 minute or one hour drive. It's now global and it allows you, if you have that first mover advantage, to be the employer brand of choice if you're embracing remote. Um, lower attrition, like it can be as high as 40% uh, attrition improvement by enabling remote. Over 70% of people just say they're generally happier when they can work remotely. Um, and I, I feel like HR could play a pivotal role in this new world of work um, because, you know, we've talked about digital transformation specialists that have come into organizations and looked at the technology and enablement. But what about now the work model transformation? Um, HR really could be the champion of this. And I think they're actually going to be really strong leaders in the next 12, 24 months to make sure that we all put in sustainable models. But we do face challenges. Um, that, and, and this is something I've experienced from 10 years ago right up until today. When you're remote, you just have too much pipeline. And sadly, we have increased unemployment globally from 220 million to now over 400 million since March. Um, so screening, 
uh, so many applications is very, very hard to do. And ensuring that there's no bias in the process is hard. The additional screening as well that takes place, because you now have to consider all the extra data points, um, such as does someone have connectivity at home? What connectivity do they have? What's their setup from home? Do they want to work from home full time? Do they want to go to a digital hub? All of these extra data points are painful um, to, to consider. And then certainly a challenge for a lot of companies right now, and even startups, is being able to be certain about the future for the workforce. The more certain you can be, and the more you can articulate exactly what the future looks like for the remote working, the better it will be. Presenteeism for promotion, it still is ongoing. So a lot of governments are reopening cities and companies are some, some are opening their offices. And the fear is that people will feel they'll miss out on promotions if they're not actually in the office. But that goes against anything that they're feeling in terms of what they really want and what will motivate them. Um, and then finally, remote takes upfront investment. And for startups, that can be really difficult to actually invest in a model when you're trying to invest in a product development. But those companies that really nail it for the long term put in a really good model that's going to work. Um, I'm going to just stop here and look because I can see some questions coming through. Um, so one of the emerging issues for HR post-COVID-19, I believe, would be managing remote teams and online recruitment. I faced the same problem, and this question is from Sophia Williams, um, as my company is completely relying on Zoom for meetings. Recently started using a productivity tool that automatically transcribes all my recruitment interviews, meetings, team discussions. and our, Okay, so not a question, but uh, that's very good that you've found a tool that can do that. Um, I know that we started using Yonderdesk a few weeks ago, which was quite transformational for us because before we were on Slack and Zoom and Yonder Desk allows you to have a virtual office um, and on the last screen I'll show you my virtual office and you can see where everyone is in the virtual building um, and I think that connectivity is really really important. Um, I have here someone else talking about um, it's crazy attending meetings takes care of the rest. Okay, yes, there are also great um, dictating platforms for recording your notes, which is just really, really good for auto-scribing and then feeding it into Slack or whatever platform that you're on. Um, so I'll go back into the presentation. Um, from a solution perspective as a startup, having a smart working model is really key. So what is a smart working model? Well, it is, a reflection of the type of working model that you are going to have as a startup now and in the future. Now that can evolve. So you decide, are you going to be office based? Are you going to be a hybrid of office and home? Are you going to be 100% remote? Is there going to be any interaction face to face? Are you going to leverage co-working spaces and enable people to work and get together once a month? There are different examples that are running globally right now. And really what the recommendation would be is to understand what is it that your workforce wants. As a startup, it's very easy to be able to ask people what works for them. And one model might not work for everybody, but to try and get common ground can make all the difference. Um, the most successful model I think I've worked in is where we were 100% remote, pretty much Monday to Friday, um, but we would get together once every three to six months. And because of the savings that we're making on the real estate and, and all the rates that would go with uh, having a full-time office, we could really get together and live it up and have a lovely event and, and do training, and but have the social aspect. And what's interesting about remote, and maybe you're beginning to experience it now, is that because you get to see into someone's home, it's like a window into who they really are. And, and when you eventually meet, there's that awkwardness for just a few minutes. And then you realize, OK, awkwardness, maybe they're taller, shorter than you expected. But then you, you realize how connected you really are. And that question comes up a lot. Can you really connect with people in remote? You absolutely can. But equally, you have to respect the fact that they are working from their home in many cases. And it's not like an office where you can have the hundred percent focus um, at all times. I think transparency is key right now. There's a lot of fear around the impact of COVID, about models evolving, and the leaders that are really demonstrating authenticity um, are really being transparent about where the business is now and where it's going. Um, there's an amazing opportunity as well for businesses to be 100% diverse. You know, they talk about how 
more profitable a diverse company is well now you have the ability to access broader talent but what's critical is that there is no bias or you reduce the bias as much as possible in your selection process and your promotion process process so from a selection perspective what i would highly recommend in a virtual world is using personality and behavioral tools um, my favorite is actually predictive index for really understanding who someone is getting under the hood and sharing your own as a leader so they know who they're going to be connecting with and working with you can also get everyone involved in creating um, and what does great look like for the organization? And so there's this cultural fit on multiple levels. And it means that if someone's coming through the process and you're physically never meeting them, that you can be assured that they are culturally aligned. And that's very important from a connected perspective. Um, and then the other is just being human. I was involved in um, a book called Your Company With No Walls. And when we were interviewing leaders that were really shaping this new world of work, it became so apparent what set them apart was that they were empathetic and they really thought about their teams and their individual needs. And then they thought about the company and product. Um, so these are all just points and tips to help your, your startup. But if you have more questions around the technology, connectivity, that you need for your particular business um, or you're considering now going remote for the first time, having been in an office and you're thinking you can save money, um, feel free to reach out. So this is my virtual office, my, my view where I can leave this office and connect with the rest of my team. So you can drop in today into the lobby and if I'm not free, I will um, I will message you back or email you back. Um, also, I would say that um, our platform, Abodu, connects companies like Start with people who want remote working or more flexible working and it's a free ecosystem and I would highlight as well that everyone is anonymous so that we are actively reducing um, bias in the process so please feel free to go on and create a profile and, and connect with with talent or indeed you can reach out directly with myself um, in terms of like what the future looks like for everybody I'll just stop sharing now uh, what the future looks like well it is estimated that we'll be reaching half a billion people that won't have jobs in the coming months so there's going to be a lot of opportunity and what i would say to um, the leaders of startups today is that there are industries that have been really hit um, such as hospitality tourism all who have amazing skilled workers and these uh, workers with these skills are transferable so it's really about opening your mind and identifying where they are and re really reaching out. Um, the other thing I would say is I've, I've discovered with remote that there's a lot more flexibility around hours and people getting involved on equity base at the very beginning. Um, a lot of people also want to give back. So don't be afraid to reach out to people and offer them the opportunity to get involved, whether it's your board or as an advisor and obviously reward in the future. Um, I, 10 years ago, when I first went remote because I was sick and I couldn't commute, I never thought 10 years later I would still be remote because I love interacting with people. Um, but now, the power of technology and being able to connect on video and have social events online and do things like Upstart Online where you're connecting with people around the world. And the fact that I have the ability now, I work with people in the Philippines and Italy and just all over. It, it's a game changer, um, but it's, it's how the culture that you set for your organization will will really uh, d dictate and predict how successful you're going to be and the type of talent that you will attract. Um, so I think once you establish what your smart working model is, share it with the world. And if you do come on a Bodu, we would really welcome you on and share your smart working model because that in itself will attract amazing talent to your door. Um, and Jennifer is just commenting here, an important point for a hiring manager to be industry agnostic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that e-learning and the training online has made such a difference. Um, and, you know, it's a test of your onboarding. If you can take someone with the right personality profile and the aptitude and the motivation, then really uh, in many roles, training should be able to give them the skills they need to execute. And what you'll get in return is just incredible loyalty and very high production levels. Um, so if anyone has any other questions, they can share here now. Uh, Otherwise, I will end the session and just thank you very much for, for tuning in.